Hello. 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 How are you, Greg? I'm wonderful. How are you following your uh, getaway? Ah, uh, yes. Post holiday blues. Yeah, we haven't really spoke since you've been back. No, apart no, from on on the stage. Yeah, yeah. It was good, though, was it? Awesome. Yeah. Really good. Really good. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Glad to have you back. Week, which is uh, quite hard. It's, yeah. <laughs> it was funny because you went away on the Saturday and it was over that 48 hour, 72 hour period where, where all this balloon, <laughs> balloon stuff happened. And that was the funniest thing. I, I think I'd messaged someone and I put it on Twitter and put down that the weekend he goes away with no internet and all this kicks off. <laughs> Mm. They went away on the Friday, technically, and then yeah, yeah, they yeah. come back till late this Saturday. Yeah. And everything <laughs> happened in that week. It did. That it I did. have no internet, no data, or anything to even have a lot. Literally, in the middle of the sea, like no data or anything. It was it was funny. It was quite ironic that that would happen when when you go away. But glad, glad to have you back. Glad to have you back. Good to, well, of course, I say good to be back, but it's not really, back, is it? Back, no. back in that ship going around the sea, it's uh, it's good. You're basically a pirate for a week, yes, before you yeah. can eat food for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Nice, it's good. Nice, <laughs> evening, evening, Nick. Nick. We <laughs> hope all is well with you, Nick. So, yeah, this is um, an impromptu live. Um, yep. As always. So th- as always, yeah. So thanks for, for joining us. Anybody that's locked in and viewing now on Facebook. Uh, is it just Facebook we're on? Uh, yes. YouTube? Don't, we don't have the... Um... Pro version to stream to multiple places, so it's just oh, yeah. the <laughs> podcast page. Tight bastards. <laughs> oh, wait. Too soon. Oh. Too soon. Eager. Eager. <laughs> so what are we going to be talking about tonight, Ash? Well, let's just start with the balloons. Because I'm not, I literally, well. I've not even really talked about them, I'm not believe really, in well, took it in what's been going on the funniest thing is that as soon as the balloons came in and it became a thing globally they've gone it's like there's been no more talk about them it's not in the papers so for those of pe- uh, those of you that actually don't... back a holiday let's just go silent yeah that's it that's the funniest thing again it happened in my world it just didn't happen <laughs> it, <laughs> it went on our day and it all kicked off you come back and it all stopped but Evening, it's literally... Mike. Evening, Mike. Good to have you with us. Yes. Yeah, welcome along. Welcome along. So, the balloons. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's talk about them. So, the first balloon went up and was spotted over American waters on the Friday, I think it was. The first, oh, the first one, it was... The fourth of it was the weekend before, wasn't it? Because I knew about the first one because it was there for days and days. Yeah, it was. So that anything about it. So that went up and was over America, and then it went over, um, over the coastline, and they shot it down basically. And they, they, um, there's videos of this F whatever it was F fourteen or F eighteen or something. Going up and, and firing off a missile and taking out um, this balloon. It's a cool video. It is a cool video, and I think didn't they f- they miss with the first shot? I think that was the. <laughs> um, but it turns out allegedly there was a twelve dollar. Oh no, that was one of the other the other balloons. I think actually <clears throat> we'll uh, we'll come on to. So this one had some equipment hanging below it. It was a big white balloon, and it was said to be a Chinese balloon over America and over the sort of like the waters of America. And, um, yeah, they they made a decision eventually to shoot it down. 
which it's surprising it took so long, but I suppose they had to to wait until it had gone over somewhere where it was non populous. Um, I guess. I guess. It it all seems a bit dodgy. I've seen recovery footage um, this week of them pulling the the balloon sort of sack off the out of the sea, and I'm not being funny. If you can remember the Roswell, <laughs> the 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 newspaper photograph mm, where they're the sort of parade parading <laughs> this this balloon, it it strikes such a similar chord to the the Roswell balloon. <laughs> that ironic, so ironic that that it would be a a weather balloon of some kind. But it turns out to be a spy satellite or weather satellite via balloon from China. It just mm. it was weird how long they left it because literally travel from like one side of the states to the other. It's yeah, like, just let him, just let, just let him do it. Just yeah, and that's it. the weird thing. That's the weird thing. And it was, I think, it was about forty thousand feet or something like that. Um, and then they decide to shoot it down um, without really ha- what appears to be a recovery team ready to go. It sort of shot down. It went into the sea. Then they go out to try and find it. It just, I don't know. Yeah, it seems to be not very handled very well. No. Good Shopping, evening, Tom and Samantha Stefanovic, Vines and Dubs. Yes, welcome yeah. along. <laughs> we are good. Welcome we along. Are good. Hello, Mike. <laughs> Hello, Mike. Maggie, good to, good to see you again. Hey. Hello, 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 hello. And Neil, welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Got this got this for my birthday. Top commentator award, best present ever. Ah. Congratulations. <laughs> don't know what that is, but yeah, well done. Well done. Yeah, don't you know, Ash, it's people who comment a lot, they become like a Oh, on our page, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool, cool. Oh, well done. Yeah. Awesome. Happy birthday. Awesome. Yeah, happy birthday. Happy birthday. 21 years old again. <laughs> I'm always 29. Happy birthday. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm about 29. No, let's just keep it there. And <laughs> just like evening, I am, Ashley. Like, evening, Nat. I can pass a 29. I can't. <laughs> I don't get ID'd anywhere for anything. <laughs> Thomas, <laughs> how are we doing? So, do we think all the balloons shut down or something else? <laughs> shit down. So, <laughs> yeah. Shit down. So, so that, that was the, like the first balloon. And I, I do think, looking at the footage I saw, that there was definitely some contraption at the bottom and it did look like some other sort of satellite balloons that I'd seen online and photographs in, in other airspace. But then you didn't really hear much about the others. There was one over Alaska. Um, there was one over Canadian, sort of Canadian airspace, and Justin Trudeau contacted Biden, and Biden agreed to shoot it down, which is weird. And then there was one over. Missouri. Kind of too peaceful, aren't they? Kind of just like yeah. We don't yeah. need to get involved. Let America. <laughs> Let America do it. So they that was another one. There was one over Missouri, I think it was. Let me just make sure I'm accurate on that. Uh, Michigan. Michigan, sorry. And it closed um, some airspace, um, which was – there must have been something up there. There was said that some of the planes – went up and couldn't visually see anything, although there was radar anomalies. It just... And then eventually China said that they'd got one in air airspace. (laughs) Whether or not that's him just trying to to deflect blame for a a spy satellite. But do we think they're all balloons? So much of me wants to say no, that they were something else. It does seem to be different, like sizes and shapes. So, like the second one that's over Alaska, 
uh-huh. it was like the size of a small car and it said it was lightning, yep. not a balloon. Yeah, and there was one, one that was cylindrical. Yeah, that's the Canadian one. Yeah, cylindrical yeah, shape. Smaller. Yeah. One was a hexagon shape. I think that was the the last American one. Yeah, had an octagon. Octagonal. 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 Mm-hmm. Octagonal structure with strings hanging off, but with no that's a, So that's that's eight sides, isn't it? Sorry, not a hexagon, octagon. And they're, so they're all different, which I don't know. I think if it's like all coming from one place, then why are they all different yeah. types of balloons? It just seems weird because there's been no real footage of the other ones that I've seen. No, they've not been, not been showing it. It's no. Very weird. Very Which weird. is why I said when they pulled the the, the balloon skin off of um, out of the water, it just seemed like a Roswell moment. And like Neil's just said, that their description, certainly the Canada one, no, it, was, it was a tic-tac. It was like silvery grey, cylinder shape, about the size of a car. Or smaller, so... It just is funny because when it all kicked off that night, it was like Saturday night, the prop, the first proper night of it all going mad. And um, I, I was online and I saw Ryan Sprague was going to be doing like a YouTube live. Mm. So I went on there and he was with um, Vinnie Adams as well. So the, both of them were talking about the balloons and it was all like, it was all happening as as yeah, they were yeah, live. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's just it was quite an exciting little few hours, really, that you you missed completely, Ash. <laughs> I had no idea was, what was happening. So Natalie's saying that no, not balloons, because there was radar issues, interferences. Yeah, there was some radar anomalies. There was loads of issues. Um, it just it just seems weird. It just seems weird. I'm roughly that as well, Nick. <laughs> what I did want to talk about was, so that's happened, and it all went dead quiet again. And yep. as far as we know, shooting down of what these objects were, because they the other bit I did want to cover off was that in the papers, they were classed as unidentified flying objects. They were called UFOs specifically in the press. That's what was a bit weird because I yeah. posed a question on Twitter as I came back after a week of no internet or data properly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like bits of it for a couple of hours at a time, but I couldn't. When I, mean, I was in Germany, I was in and in different countries, I was trying to like mm. get ten minutes to have a look at what was going on. Obviously, everything was happening. It was all I mean. Talk, but that's when I came back properly, and I was like, "Why with the balloons? And why are we sort of classing them in the same category as UFOs?" Because like, yeah. we had loads of media inquiries. When I got my emails, mm-hmm. we had what we had Jeremy Kyle wanting us to go on his show uh, to talk about it and stuff. We told him to basically fuck off. Uh, we've had media inquiries from all different newspapers, and the other UFO groups have as well, all as a result of these balloons. It's like the yeah. connecting balloons to UFOs. And me having not seen how it developed. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't come back to free balloons. The government said it's these balloons have shut down, but there's a big massive UFO frenzy. Yeah, in, in the week, so it, I understand the sort of link. The it link was there. weird because it all sort of like unraveled really quickly. It'd be like there was that the Chinese one, that spy one, and then all of a sudden it was like there's one here. Then a few hours later, there's another one. And like within 48 hours, there was like these three that had been spotted and shooting down. And then China comes out and says one. So it was, it was a really like fast changing thing. And they'd closed down um, the airspace over Michigan. And it, it was just. And the funny thing was that they said they couldn't spot them at night. From the, the pl- planes couldn't go up and they couldn't see them at night. Mm-hmm. And they thought, well, if you've got radar and this technology that's being sort of like bypassed by these objects 
just because we only saw the the picture of one of those that's the thing it's one of those that we saw and that was the one that they wanted us to see and the one that they allowed us to watch being shot down which mm-hmm. so the question is did they actually shoot anything down after the chinese one because so we're they... just taking their word that they shot mm-hmm. down. i believe so I haven't seen. I think there's some there's some clips of stuff going around the internet, but or, or, as it's the internet, nothing's dated, nothing's time stamped. There's no location or anything. Yeah, like I saw that. a couple of videos. One where the scene is shut down. I was like, I saw the video about five years ago. Yeah, yeah. There's other ones from Billings in Montana. They keep posting videos of basically planes and contrails and saying that this yeah. is shut down. It's like that's literally a plane. Yeah. But, who knows? Who knows? It's... <laughs> so the other question is, if they were UFOs, did they actually shoot them down? Because surely if these if these craft or these objects, we we'll call them UFOs, because that's what they were called, um, if they had managed to shoot down these UFOs, what does that mean in terms of security? That means potentially that these, if we're going down that they these are not weather balloons, they are UAPs, and say we go tic-tac for argument's sakes, one was shaped like a tic-tac, then they probably wouldn't want us to know that they couldn't shoot them down because these things were invading our skies with impunity. We can't catch them with jet aircraft, yet we're saying we're shooting them down. Like, no evidence. comment there, but if there was something mm-hmm. else, you wouldn't wouldn't be able to shoot them down, surely? Yeah, you'd like to think not. and they, But they wouldn't want you to know that either. And like Niels put, it's been suggested they couldn't shoot them down, so we won't get any wreckage. And that, that's it. It's like the, the, the best thing they can do is to show them shooting down one that's been in the sky for ages, the Chinese one. Then all these others go up and we shoot them down, but nobody's witnessed them. Nobody's mm. seen, seen them being shot down. And because one was in Alaska, um, they, they was having trouble getting recovery I don't know it all screams a bit bloody conspiracy there I think unless they tell us more information like the conspiracy is just going to grow but the problem is they tell us stuff but they don't always prove it so like they've told us they shot down these these objects but we haven't seen the evidence that they've shot them down. But lo and behold, the first one, miraculously, they they showed video footage of this mm-hmm. jet fighter blowing it out of the sky. Yeah, it's the moment, it's the moment of the bullet, wasn't it, that recorded it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I guess it could have just been there was no one. So yeah. if we did all the balloons there, maybe we gone out, scrambled the jet, shot mm-hmm. it. And then it'd be very you know, like 40,000 feet, 20,000 feet, yeah, wherever high they were. We don't like that anyone's going to be randomly one seen the balloon or two saw the jet and thought, Oh, let's just see where that's going and record it. So yeah. I guess it's been hard for them to record it. Well, with the first one, it was there for days, people are following it, people are watching it, yeah, the right place, right time, caught them shooting it down. So, I mean, right place, right time, there we go. I guess convenient. Uh, yeah, and I guess it's one all... source of video. One source of video. This this guy's video clip. It's the only clip that I've seen is his clip of it being shot down. So I don't even know. The conspiracy theorist in me doesn't even know that that video that I saw was of that particular balloon. That's the thing. I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I get to the point in our 
like progress and our journey with UFOs and paranormal and aliens and cryptids that it kind of like, well, you're telling me you've shot them down, but I need to see it. I don't want you to do this stage managed pull out of a balloon skin from the sea. I want you to, I want mm. to see the bloody thing land crash onto the floor and a video camera live the video live from the thing. plane. Yeah, I want to see all of that because if they if they say they haven't got footage of all the others, that's bullshit. Because they they seem to have footage when they need to have footage. It does. It's too convenient. It's too convenient for me. Mm. Um, Nick's mentioned the uh, coming from yes. Nelson because of that Ohio um, yeah. train derailment. I believe there's been two now. Yeah, and they, they really haven't said much about that at all. Not in the UK press, for definite. Not and I know, I've seen it, like massive clouds of chemical like smoke going up. Um, yeah, I saw right, like, like a map of the US, and it was like, I like this radius, like a red circle. And it's like, if you're in this circle, if you start sort of getting any health problems, mm. or anything happening, like sort of let people know. Yeah. And it's a massive circle. Yeah, like covering all these states and must be hundreds and hundreds insane. of miles. Insane. It's like, what the freak? They showed the 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 cloud of smoke from above, like from above the cloud. Looked like a tornado. Looks this horrible looking thing. And like that, I know there's like chemical spills into the rivers. I've seen video clips of people sort of like putting stuff into the river, and you can see an oily film and everything on top of the the river. Um, but I've not seen it on my uk news sources <laughs> so to anybody that's been following our page over the last week ash has not been doing it it's me putting up all these unverified stories from the daily mail primarily as and when i saw them happening on the, on there so it created a lot of interest and people talking about it on the page um and i did put down that i did not could not verify the legitimacy of of the stories or anything like that. It was just what was happening. I was just putting up. So, mm. <laughs> so bear with and, me, guys. <laughs> and we've sort of got two sort of different sides of the coin with two comments. So we've got Thomas saying, what is with this Project Bluebeam or whatever? And but you know, Project Bluebeam is quick. Yeah, so basically it's... Yep been talked about for years actually it's been mm -hmm. yeah we've we've, we've about spoken about it. it a few times yeah yeah where the government of the world are going to be using holograms to fake an alien yep. invasion basically to yeah then this new world order's going to come and take over the planet and they're going to we're going to think aliens are invading and when you see some of the stuff in the sky that is holograms and there was a, a meteor display i think in romania there's a video of it and it's it's stunning. You can't tell that it's not real meat, is it? It's oh, I've not insane. seen that. I'll have a look. Um, I'm trying to get out for the for the stream, but it's like if they were doing that, like you probably will be hard to not know whether that's real or not with mm -hmm. the technology we have. So that is well, so that's one argument where is this part of Project Movie? Is this the start of introducing things in the sky, USA, reacting to it and shooting them down? And I'm all going to come and all oh, so going to happen. So that's one side of it. And Natalie's put, could it be the wean drip, dread, drip fed info to prepare for a larger reveal disclosure? Again, it could be a very, they're balloons. What we've seen in the media, it was all UFOs for a week. Mm -hmm. It's the front page, UFOs, yeah. UAP, shooting down UFOs, all this stuff. So even though they're now saying it's all balloons, is this sort of again introducing it now for a week in a few months? Something else is going to happen. Hmm. I mean, the one actually a couple of hours ago, there was another balloon somewhere coming up, being seen. Um, so is this just more information, or is it just to cover up something else like the Ohio train hmm. development? Yeah, um, yeah, it it could could well be any of that. Um, it could well be any of that. And I think 
like you say, because they're putting UFOs shot down on the front page of the papers, you say you say it enough times and people just become desensitized to it. And they so then they go, Oh, it's a, it's only a balloon again. It's only a balloon again. And then a few months down the line, this tic tac UFO has been shot down. And everybody's going, oh, it's probably just a balloon again. Yeah, there's Roswell number two just happening, pulling out recovered um, creatures and entities and, and such. Like. And everybody thinks it's a balloon. It's, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, my world of conspiracy theories had gone back in the, the cupboard for, for a number of years <laughs> and um this screams like one big conspiracy but like you say it's either like a, a project blue beam type thing or it's covering up something else that's happening because we've got all sorts happening but what if it was uh-huh. okay so for the sake of argument yeah this was a spaceship from a different planet with aliens on board yeah, they come to our planet and we shot them out of the sky. <laughs> what what happens next? Well, that would be typical Earth people, for definite. Um, what happens next? Yeah, that's. I can only imagine the news reports back on that planet saying tourists, space tourists, end up at Earth and get shot down when trying to introduce themselves. Um, it's, I don't know, it, it either, pro- well, I don't know. It doesn't seem to bode well for humankind, does it? It doesn't seem to bode well. If we're shooting down aliens, I've seen many alien films where this happens and it, <sighs> I mean, it doesn't end too well. No, I mean, like we've mentioned before, and we, we've spoken on round tables and everything about UFOs, but my belief is that if they were here to harm us, we would have been wiped out by now. Based on the technology that these these objects seem to display, if they are controlled by or piloted by or or whatever, sent to to like spy on us or or whatnot by another advanced being or entity or or whatever, I think they would have wiped us out by now if they meant us harm, personally. What, what if mm. it's been 1947, 70 years? Yeah. 80 years since Roswell? 75 years. 75 years since Roswell? Yeah. So maybe if they've, if, if Roswell was... Spaceship with creatures in from a different planet. What do you think it was, just quickly? I think it was. Okay. Um, so if they're coming from their planet, obviously we don't know how they're traveling. We don't know how sort of technology they've got, the space time, all that shit. If maybe this one that's come now only left in their world 10 minutes after the Roswell craft, mm-hmm. like they sort of come together... <laughs> But because the way space time is, it took 80 Earth years for yep. the second one to come. But for them, it's only going to be 10 minutes after them. So it could be sort of, <laughs> this is just the second one. And they are the same thing. And now, obviously, this, Roswell was a crash rather than being shot down. Mm-hmm. And the second one, or maybe the second one was a rescue mission. You know, it crashed. It's only just got here. So it's got like the signal back or whatever. And then now we've shot that one down. So they're going to send another signal out saying, I have two that have come to this planet and <laughs> killed them or whatever, or captured them. Yeah. They're going, now going to send proper reinforcements. To we might take them 70 years to... Yeah. In this case, we don't need to worry about it, but... No. Nah. Yeah, might. that's a good shout. <laughs> that's just, a good shout. That's randomly hit on coming in my head. Yeah, I see. Who knows? They, yeah, this could have been a rescue mission, and <laughs> it's mad to think that because it's been so long. So whether or not their time, it not just, 
unless it shows how incompetent they are, that they've mastered interstellar travel, but <laughs> they're not very good at piloting or evading capture. I don't know. It just seems a bit, I don't know. It's, um, it's a lot to unpick from the possibilities of these these weather balloons or whatever they were. Um, we are just an alien ant farm. That's a good good band name. But, okay, then, Ash, so they're flying over the UK. Nick Pope is still at the Ministry of Defence with his picture on the wall of the Calvine mm. UFO. And they go, right, this is serious. It's It's in a commercial flight path for planes coming over the uk and the uk skies are busy because you've got heathrow and gatwick which are the main main two airports that connect you europe to america what are they doing about it what does rishi sunak do does he shoot it down or does he do it publicly because he's been told to make it look like it's being shot down somewhere. I mean, they like to shut down airports for drones and that sort of stuff pretty, pretty yep. easily. Yeah, they say pretty quickly shut down the yep. airport, ground the flights, yep. divert all the ones in the air to different airports. So nobody can see what is actually taking place in the sky. Nice. So I can. So that be the first thing they do. Mm-hmm. Do they shoot it? I don't think they will. They will. I think they'll send a couple of planes to escort it, see what is going on. Yeah. And I think they would just let it float to wherever it's going to float to. Yeah. If it doesn't pose a risk to anything on the ground, I don't think they would shoot it. No. I think we're a bit different than the US. In that we're quite. We're quite fortunate that once it goes over the the west coast and flies over Ireland and Northern Ireland, there's not much around until you get to the east coast of America. So they could conveniently shoot something down over that coast and nobody would really (laughs) be able to prove otherwise. Mm. I think you're right. I think they would just let it fly over. It's too much of a risk. We're quite quite condensed in the number of people we've got in over the mainland so i think it would be a risky strategy to to shoot something down especially if you fucked it up and it it took out uh, some kind of crit, critical infrastructure so like a power station or something like that I don't like with, with the first one when when they shot it out and it was like oh great they just unleashed covid 23 because that's what was inside the balloon. So like, you don't know what it could be. Yeah. Something well, that's it. And that was one of the, the headlines. One of the memes was COVID-23 escapes. And who knows? Who knows? It's, it, I don't know. I don't know what to make of it all. I don't know what Even to make Lisa. of it when it happened. Even in Lisa. I don't know what to make of it when it happened. I don't know. <laughs> Matt, soon that went to checkers. And let it all blow over. That's that's exactly why I'd be down to Winchester as well. Got got the um <laughs> the cheap beers and cheap meals and checkers that we pay yeah. for them to <laughs> Yeah. To but buy. I like the uh the movie reference there, Matt. Um one of my favourite films about zombies and and such like. Never gets old uh, ever. No. No, it doesn't. And the funniest thing is, there's some people, I, I don't know, you might not know it, might know it. So he gets on the bus when it's all kicking off and the song that's playing, the dance track that's in this kid's headphones is um, Zombie Nation by Kerncraft 4000. So it was a dance track in the 90s and the song is called Zombie Nation, which is quite a nice little touch that they put in the film. Um so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. I don't know what to make of it at the time. It was all quite wild. Um, and 
if you get a chance to see the Ryan Sprague and Vinnie Adams talking about it, Vinny is very much like the ash of the two conversing. And I was more of the Ryan with my excitedness. And then Vinny and Ash would be the ones calming things down, saying, Yo, calm down, <laughs> Greg. Calm down. <laughs> uh, Neil mentioned the MOD changed UFO UAP in the early 2000s, way before the US started using it. They may be a bigger player than we know. We're definitely a bigger player. Um, yeah. Just not getting told. Because when the, in the recent um, latest report, he mentions that they had talked to allies about the so report. And it's like, well, that's surely got to include us. Then yeah. the MOD still says, nah. Yeah, you don't. And just using the term UAP, hmm. I think we I've seen files from the nineties from the UK using it. And I've seen from on the US side, nineteen fifties, the term's been used since. Okay. It has been around for a long, long time. Yeah. It's only recently it's sort of been used again, like more prominently. It has yeah. been around for, for a long time. That term. So, shall we move on? Yeah, I was going to say, I think we've... <laughs> balloons have been done to death. Yeah. But it's, it's, a, it's definitely a good talking point for people because it divides people over, is it a balloon? Are we being told the truth, the conspiracy side? Is it aliens? What is it? It's, it's a good one because just the way it came out over those few days was just mental. I'm I glad. It all. I'm really disappointed that you missed it. It's actually on the on the on the cruise ship we were on. It was like yeah. BBC World News Channel, and it was on there. I saw it, caught it on there once. It had some random woman just talking about it, but I couldn't watch it for long. But it's like it's actually on like, randomly on BBC World News at two in the morning or something. <laughs> it was on for talking about it. But yeah, cool. So let's talk about, let's go to ghosts. Let's talk about ghosts for a little bit. Yeah. What would you like to talk about? So Danny Moss, who yes. has been on the podcast a couple of times. Yeah. He's been in the media quite a lot recently with his My Haunted Hotel in yep. Chester, uh, where you can stay overnight and you can stay in his haunted hotel. You do experiments, you can either choose to sleep over or just like go home at three in the morning or something. Uh, staying in these rooms that are all haunted. Yeah. There's haunted dolls in there. Everything going on. This house, this hotel is just took over about a year or so ago, I think. It sort of turned into my haunted hotel. Yeah. And it's a themed hotel. But Danny is one of the leading panel investigators, very down to earth. Yeah. Very no bullshit type. type yeah. Guy. And we speak to him off air as well, and he's very, very similar off air as he is on air. And he, like I say, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. And he put a clip out today, I think, from the latest episode because the basically you can stay at the hotel, and there's basically every room's got multiple cameras in. So you stay there is videoed, and then each week they make a, an episode of the show based on what the guests have experienced. So it's sort of they're not doing it, it's the guests you pay to stay, and you then become like the star of that week's episode. Yeah. It's what's going on in the rooms that you're in and the experiments that you're doing. Michaela Ford's been there actually. Yes, twice. Twice she's yeah. been there now. Yeah. She came up this week. Um she said to me, because I live not too far. She's like, Oh, we meet up, she lives down south. I was like, I'm literally Natalie. Natalie's comment. <laughs> Naughty. Naughty, nah. <laughs> and then she likes him because he's scouts. So that's the other. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he put out a clip on his Facebook page a couple of hours ago, I think from today's episode that came out, which you can watch on YouTube and Facebook and have the search for my haunted hotel. Yeah. And it's a clip where he's just setting up the camera in one of the rooms, like ready for the guests to come in and he sort of talks to the camera and then you hear a woman's voice that she just somewhere in the room that this voice just comes out yeah so i hope 
the sound will work with this. Let's let's give it a go. Let me know if it doesn't come on. Oops. So this is the room. This is the clip. Can't hear any sound. No sound, right? Oh, Ash. Oh, no. <laughs> hmm. Right. Let me try and figure that out. Why talk about something else for a minute? So what's coming up next for you, Greg? What, anything lined up? Um, not really, no. I'm just excited to get back recording some of these episodes, um, getting some more interviews down. Got some... Um, I want to do some more work with EVPs and um, a Ouija board, really. That's That's my... Um, that's my aim. Cool, cool. We need to get back in my basement. We do need to get back in your basement. And we'll figure out how to live stream it. <laughs> yeah, it depends on the internet down there, doesn't it? Mm. All right, let me see if this works. Sorry, I'm just typing at the same time. <laughs> this got a sound. Is that sound working then? No. no. Oh, I can hear it like that. Oh, yeah. Got to love a live broadcast. Yeah, everything goes perfect. No. <laughs> We we'll say it's because you've been on all day, Ash. You'd... Yeah. Still in holiday mode. When I'm back at work tomorrow, I'll be like, still in holiday mode. Oh, you've not been at work today? No, I'm back in tomorrow. Ah. So, has anybody got any questions they'd like to ask us while Ash is doing his technical stuff? <laughs> You're in control of what pops up on the screen. Yes, you're right, Nick. There's loads happen in that hotel. Um, I've seen chairs move, um, dolls like um, dropping off when there's nobody in a room. I've seen shadows going down the corridors, caught on camera, doors opening. Um, yeah, it seems like a pretty cool place. And I know um, I spoke to Danny, and he wants, he's on about us going up there. So we could do a live from there, Ash, potentially. Definitely. But why is everything up north? Why is everything up north? You, well, you've got Rendlesham. That's... Yeah, it's still not that close to me. <laughs> Like knowing there was. <laughs> right, let me try this. One. Right, come on in. Third time, okay. Come on. <laughs> there we go. You can hear that. Mm -hmm. Is it loud enough? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I can hear it. No, That's what I'm deaf. But it's like really, really loud. Tuesday sessions. Can you hear that? Yep. Okay. So it just comes after. It literally now, actually. Let me just go back a little bit. So after we say sessions, you yep. hear the woman's voice. So let's see if we can hear it. Uh, this is room five. Tuesday sessions. What? 
Did you hear that? I no, I couldn't really hear it. Let's try it again. Uh, this is room five Tuesday sessions. Yeah, I heard something. That's it's quite quiet. It's, it's a woman's voice that's going like, Hello. <laughs> So it's just like, uh, hello. Okay. It's, it's quiet, but it, it is quite clear. I'll have to check yeah. it out. And it sounds like it comes from inside the room as well. I don't like it's from outside the window. And it's yeah, just quite clear. So he says we're here like ready for the Tuesday sessions. And it goes, hello. Like no. a, woman, a woman's voice. He's just put that up on uh, his Facebook. So check out Danny Moss or My Haunted Hotel. So check out that. Um, yes. Yeah, we definitely need to. Yeah, <laughs> I'll uh, mix it to the or Lionel Richie. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Because Nick Nick's bought me a coffee before. I've not. I I know you haven't, Ash. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, Chester. That's a fair distance for me. It's a fair distance. What's that? Half half an hour for me. Is it up from you? Like upwards. Down and left. It's okay. Like southwest. Okay. You say the oh. man out of chest Manchester. It's just Chester. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's about three hours for me, I think. It must be. It's about two and a half to yours. Mm. Uh, this time we come up, we could always like meet there first. Yeah, we could do. You drive a night session in Chester. Yeah. Okay. Nice place, Chester. Really old. Like yeah, uh, yeah. Medieval and walls going around the town and Okay. Everything is yeah, nice donut that. shop under the bridge. It's like a bridge where there's like a, a clock thing. And there's like a little window <laughs> in this bridge thing in the middle of the town centre. Yeah. You do these lovely donuts, like hot and fresh and yeah, Nick probably knows what I mean. But yeah, Chester's a, a, very, a very nice place. It's kind of got a script a little bit. Isn't it? Yeah, we have a little bit, but a little bit of um, wish you were here type vibe going on. <laughs> you're selling Chester to me. <laughs> so, what do you want to talk about now, Ash? Um,. I mean, yesterday we at UFO Identified released the 2022 UK UFO report. Yes, finally. I've seen you spamming that all over social media now. <laughs> so for those that don't know, Ash and his group, UFO Identified, they have the largest database of current UK UFO sightings. Perfect. I've said that enough times to get that right now. <laughs> um, and if you've been to the UFO Identifies Mini Conference, um, which was last year now, um, there was a lot of data presented by Ash there and the team. And every year you produce the big report, and it's quarterly as well, is it monthly or quarterly? Uh, we do a monthly report yeah. based on the previous month's sort of yeah. sightings, and then we put it all together into the year like annual report. Yeah, yeah. And I know when we first started doing the podcast, this was during lockdown back in the old days. And I know you were because you were on furlough at the time, and you were you were spending all your time collating this stuff. I remember. Back then, so to see it all now and the way it sort of developed and changed, and it's become this thing now. And I know you guys get a lot of press inquiries on the back of these reports coming We've out. Three which is today, cool. three different. Which is cool. Inquiries. Very cool. You're in the Daily Record quite a lot. Mm, that was one that we used out today. <laughs> uh, UFO expert. Again. UFO expert. <laughs> But yeah, no, so you, you do get a lot of good press out of it, a lot of interest from the media on on your work. And I know you and the girls and Steve um, do a lot of work to pull everything together. So I know it's not a small thing 
in no. fact, I know it's a large thing. So yeah, let what happened? What 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 can you divulge? What can you share? So yeah, let me just bring it up actually. Definitely not Zach Bagans. Um, who said that a minute ago? Nick. Don't get this for Zach Bagans. You also don't get anything fake from us either. So. No, we didn't get anything fake with us. And Danny Moss, I must say, out of all the people that... Shots fired. <laughs> of all the people... That... <laughs> My God. Of all the people we speak to um, and have spoken to over the last couple of years, Danny Moss is definitely up there with the people that I would legitimately say if he's got some kind of evidence or he's producing and uh, providing evidence of the paranormal... He was. He would be one of the sources of people that I would go to to say, mm. yeah, to get a, like a, an answer that I'd trust. Because, like you mentioned, right, so he doesn't bullshit. He's quite uh, open with his thoughts around apps and all that kind of stuff that we, we've spoken about. And I know he is. Um, he he is one of those people that I would go, Danny. Can you check this? What do you think? And that I would respect his his sort of input. Yeah definite so let's bring up the UFO report so it's 18 pages obviously you're not going to go for 18 pages I just sort of go to some of the highlights um, this is very to... tell me Oxfordshire <laughs> in fact this is um, I've got from Didcot actually um, this is an interesting one which is where I stayed on Friday before that's where we met up we day. met up yeah, we did we did we did. Had a drink in the pub. Yeah, we did. In Didcot. Met your parents. Yes. I met your parents. <laughs> Always a nervous moment when you meet the parents. Your mum's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> and your dad is, obviously. <laughs> um, right. So, yes, yeah, so the Didcot one is the only. In fact, let's just skip to the way it mentions that, which is down here. I'll go back. You're very thoughtful, um, actually. past it <laughs> here we go now it's there so this part of the report is basically what the ufo sighting is classified as most of them lights in the sky mm -hmm. um what does that like now stand for moving uh nocturnal lights nocturnal so lights. previously we just kept it nocturnal lights yeah but then for this year for 2022 i sort of expanded it because there's a difference between nocturnal lights in the sky where it literally just looks like yep. a star or a satellite that's moving, or something that's in the night sky, but it's got a shape to it. So that's where different differential comes in. When we talk about yep. a light in the sky or like craft, like a yep. physical okay. object. Whereas previously, cool. there'd have been no sort of cloud case between the two, so it would have just been like 300 nocturnal lights. Whereas I thought it was better to sort of differentiate it. Before. Yeah. Definitely. A uh, daylight disc, obviously, is something we see in the daytime. It's quite a high number, um, nearly 200 so in daylight hours last year, which is pretty high. Yeah. Uh, trail C1, which is where you see within 500 feet of the witness. And there's one CE2, close encounter of the second time, of yes. the second kind. Um, so we, this is based on the Alan Hynek sort of classification that you used during Project Blue Book, or after Project yep. Blue Book. And there's one of the second kind, which is where there's sort of interference, so maybe vehicle interference, other stuff going on on the ground. And there's one case in the whole year, which was close encounter of the second kind, which was in Didcot in Oxfordshire. Hey. On, the up Oxfordshire. <laughs> on the 21st of December, so not actually that long ago. Okay. And what happened um, there? Or to... So the, the witness, he was just driving, can't remember which road it was, driving on the road, and there was five lights, I believe. Um, I'll just read that out, yeah. Five lights, but in a circular formation. But he said, it, see, it was like an object, like a craft, rather than five separate lights. It was they're all connected to the same thing. Okay. And it went across the vehicle, like overhead. Yeah. Went in front of him. Then it came backwards 
back over his car. Okay. And That's then weird. Again. So it's sort of just going traveling with the car and sort of going back and to yeah. over it. And he was getting uh, interference on the car radio. It's playing up. Wow. Not playing properly. So there was some vehicle interference there. That's what the information we've got because it wasn't reported to us. This was reported to um, New Fon, I think, or New Folk. Um, yeah, because if it was going one direction, I could think because Didcot is quite an active place. There's a lot of a lot of planes go over Didcot. To be fair, because Bryce Norton, right next to where I live, the the flight paths and a lot you get a lot of helicopters go over towards Didcot. Mm. Chinooks and and such like when I used to drive back from work from sort of Didcot area back to my house, um, all of a sudden a, a Chinook would just come over the the hedgerows just out of nowhere. So it's it's quite a lot of flights. But yeah, for it to go backwards and forwards over and interfere, that's that's mm. weird. I like that. Uh, Neil says you're the Timothy God of the twenty first century. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that yeah. book behind me. Is that the book I sent up? It is. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Don't look know. at where that book come from, though. On the inside page. Greg. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> to be fair. What? Two thousand is the most recent date on it. That's when I burst the guy from the library. <laughs> That's You're welcome. Probably. You're welcome. Thanks for your stolen book. Nicely. It's because I care, book. Ash. I send you expensive gifts. <laughs> um, yeah, so if we sort of go back up to the top. Yep. Uh, like I say, you can read or download this report on the website ufoidentified.co.uk. Yeah. You just download it and look at all the pretty pictures and everything that's on there. Yeah. So, altogether, there are 497 reported sightings of UFOs in the UK last year. Wow. Um, which, from this graph, you can see, is an increase. Um, you look at England, blue is this year, red is last year, and yellow is the year before 2020. Why do you think there was that little dip last year? Because, if I bring it down to the monthly, month by month breakdown, Again, yellow 2020. Look at these two, March and April. Huge. COVID. So, yes, so this is when COVID kicked off. Yep. Yeah. Also, this was when Elon Musk started launching loads of Starlink satellites. Yeah. Between March and April 2020. And there were basically hundreds of reports that were Starlink. That were these line of lights. Yeah. All going across the sky. It was quite a places. spectacle to be seen during those those months. I remember watching them going up the first few times. It's like holy shit, that's incredible. It it, it wasn't. Um, he, he actually had to reduce the brightness. Yes, so he, he did, did two things: where he reduced the brightness and also put like things like visors on the new ones going up, so they yeah. weren't as bright. As, like astronomers were complaining, saying like, "Yeah, they were bright and stuff." And, so sighting did produce, still got some throughout the rest of the year and last year as well. But then yeah. two months in 2020 were an anomaly just because Starlink satellites. Yeah. You take them off, this will probably be less than 2021. Okay, got you. Take them off. Um, so you yeah. can't say that it's sort of increased the last couple of years. Now that was when we had we had this morning wanting me to go on. Yeah. Um, during 2020, and talk about how UFO sightings had increased during lockdown, because that was sort of the theme. I had all the yeah. data, and I was like, well, they haven't. So I was talking to the producer, and I was like, I go on the show, but I'm not going to say this, because I've got the data, and that's that's not true. No, they didn't want me to go on the show anymore, so <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go to their narrative, so they were like, yeah, yeah not interested anymore. So I was like, yeah, fuck them. I'm not going to go on and lie, you know what I mean? No, that's right. <clears throat> I did think it should have gone on, but then just because it's live, because said what you wanted. What are you going to do after? I thought, fuck, just done that. But yeah. Then about the headline, they're like, oh, you've always had I'm like, actually, no. Yeah. Um, oh, they'd have loved that. You'd never been back on that program again. <laughs> it's funny. It's like, gone rogue. It's like, 
like I say, we were asked, uh, well, Abby yeah. actually um, was reached out to by Jay McKayle live. Uh, apparently some show with Jay McKayle on. I don't have a TV, so I don't know, but it's going live and Jay McKayle to talk about the balloon stuff. And they, they were going to do a segment called The K Files, like Kyle Files or something. Yeah. Like, so I just, uh, just imagine, yeah, so we just... like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. Just screams no. I think that was a wise move. You know, a couple of listeners, like gone on this morning. Yeah. You'd be getting the brand in front of millions of people. Only but... if you mentioned a podcast would I allow it. <laughs> <laughs> to listen to Pursuit of the Paranormal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this graphic here is yeah. where UFO reports were. So our database, like you say, the biggest database of current day UFO sightings in the UK. Mm-hmm. And we that database is compiled from reports made to MUFON, reports made to the National UFO Reporting Centre, reports yep. made to Prefora, reports made to us at UFO Identified, reports made to newspapers, reports made to the police, um, reports posted on Facebook, all different places. And we compile this all into one place so you can see. We still have all these different places to go to. It's all in one place so you can see. We, we do all the legwork so it's all in one place. So you don't have to. Yes, we'll do it. We spend the hours and hours and yeah. hours and hours doing it. Uh, yeah, so this, let's see if I can zoom in, actually. There we go. So the southeast. Yeah. Are you class the southeast in Oxford? I think you are. Oh, see, see, we are, but we, we're very on almost, the border, we're, isn't it? Very on the border, yeah. We could hit three of those county, uh, like three of those areas, really. Yeah. Well, they came out top with 75 Reports. Okay. Northwest second was sixty eight. The southwest was sixty. So that whole area is pretty pretty popular for UFO reports. Now you say that, which it is obviously, but when you done the mini con, you talked about sightings per capita as well, yes. which did change things a little bit. Because I I would say I would expect the southeast to have more because there's more people live there. Obviously, yeah. with the density of London and stuff like that, but yes, good point, good point. And if we just come down a little bit, um, this quickly just compares the regions to last year. Southeast again, not the, not the highest last year, but still up there. Northwest yeah. was the most popular last year, and still pretty high uh, this year. And again, Yorkshire, Southwest, all every year seem to have quite a lot of sightings. Yeah. So you bring it down into the rate of sightings, which is what you're referring to. It's, the it's R bottom... number. <laughs> the, the R number. Oh, gosh. Yeah. We call it the ROS number. <laughs> um, so I, I sort of devise this number, pretty basic formula, just to work out per 250,000 population, how many sightings yeah. in the year. And we come up with a number Yep. to make it sort of easy to understand. So UK for as a whole, the rate of sighting, the RS, is one point eight, yeah. up from one point six last twenty twenty one. Okay. Um, and if we go down to the region by region, so the table on the right is the table we saw a minute ago. The yes. sort of how many reports. The table on the left is how many reports per person. Yes. In that region, our rate of sighting score. You can see how it changes the actual leaderboard. So you're actually more likely to see. A UFO in the southwest. Oops. Make sure it's me. Yes, it's me. <laughs> yeah. What's this now? What are you doing? Oh, I don't know it's gone. <laughs> so you can see how the table changes when yeah. we look at pop popular um, population density. Like you say, places like mm-hmm. the Northwest, yeah, which is always high in terms of number of sightings. Has a lot of people, very very popularly densely pop, pop, populated, very very densely populated. Lots of big cities. You've got Manchester, Liverpool, yeah, Chester, Preston, all close together. So there's a lot of people. So are they seeing a lot of things just because there's a lot of people? But even if you take in the rate of sightings, the Northwest is still high, still the second most popular place. Where's it come Lord. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> 
<laughs> right. Um, and like, look at the the sort of least popular ones. So the East Midlands, London, and North East, they sort of stay around the bottom. Yeah. So even taking into account the population size, it's like London obviously is a massive population, very dense. Yeah. You're not seeing many UFOs at all. They're not reporting it and only getting 0.7 rate rate of sighting okay. score. So basically not many UFOs being seen in London. Could that be just because people aren't paying attention? London's a yeah. very busy city. People are looking at the phones, people are rushing about, and just not looking up. It's quite a lot of light pollution in London as well. And a lot of light pollution, yeah. 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 So that could be right. East Midlands, North East. Again, year on year, these are very low on the table. Uh, both population density and number of sightings, just not much is being seen at all. Don't know why. At North East, pretty open. Like my mountain in mountains and stuff and sort of heading up towards Scotland. But yeah. just not many UFOs being seen at all up there. No. And so this is an interesting one to talk about. So when most likely to see UFO and it's actually like 2021 in 2022, the most popular time was to see UFO between nine and 10 PM on a Saturday night. Okay. So even though we got 20% increase on reports this year up on 2021, the most popular, ta- popular time oh my God. <laughs> It's still between 9 and 10 p.m. Yeah. So I I come on to a couple of reasons why I think this might be the case. What what do you think? Or anyone in the comments think that might be? So I'm thinking a lot of people are out and about. Um, I don't know. Do they, do they dim the lights over the weekend at that time of night? Because I know some councils do turn the lights down, the, the street lights down. Um, between certain hours, uh, why would it be on a Saturday between nine and ten? I should know this because we probably covered it last year. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Ash, and I failed the test. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, obviously, we can only sort of theorize yeah. what we think and. One of the reasons I mentioned during my presentation at Minicon and the reason I put it here as well is 9, 10, Saturday night, people are having a drink. Is yeah. it because they have had a drink and they're sort of maybe not totally taking things in properly, thinking properly? They're seeing yeah, something maybe. that would, could be a helicopter but because they've had a bit too much to drink, the brains all over the place, the minds all over the place and they think it's something different. We wake up Sunday morning. Oh, I remember that weird light we saw last yeah. night. Then they'll report it as a UFO. Whereas if they saw it on a Tuesday afternoon, you might just realise it's a helicopter. But because they're sort of impaired a little bit yeah. because of drinking alcohol or taking anything else they might be taking on a Saturday night. They're not seeing what it could be. So that's one. Big but mention here as well. That doesn't include Friday nights. There's a lot of people go out on a Friday night, but Friday was only the third or fourth most popular day for UFO sighting. Okay. At Thursday was the second. So if that was the case because of alcohol, then why are why don't we see an uptick on Fridays? So that might not be the reason. Yeah. Yeah. Second reason I sort of talked about in the report is Monday to Friday people are busy. They're at home, yeah. they're at work. They come home from work, they want to have the tea, watch a bit of telly, go to bed. There's a weekend, people that don't wear weekends are just out doing stuff. They're, they might be out having a drink, but they're outside having a fag. Yeah. And as they're having a smoke, they're looking up and they see something. Like right, just be walking the dog, something, something else. They're just not as rushed as they would be during the week. So they're taking more time to. Sort of look around them. So that could be why. Again, just sort of some theories that I I put together. Yeah, what well, seems yeah, 
logical response. In fact, yeah, Friday was really low down. So mm. Saturday's most popular, then Sunday, then Thursday, then Monday, then Wednesday, then Friday. So Friday's really yeah. low down. And like you say, I think, yeah, people got a bit more time over the weekends, probably why Saturday and Sundays are a bit more. <laughs> the rum opens your mind. <laughs> does. Um, so, yeah, time of sightings obviously clearly goes up as night comes in. Yeah. Uh, but we still get from the 497 last year, nearly 200 were during the daytime. Do you think also that some a lot of people, especially at the weekends, they might walk the dogs later at night, mm. like walking them before you go to bed, whereas during the week you, you're less likely to do it that late at night maybe? So people have got a bit more time to look around. Could be. Maybe. Could be. Um, quick look at the shapes. Like every year, the most common reported shape is looks like a star. Same sort of shape, looks like a sun in the sky, but it's moving. It, they think it's a satellite because it's moving, but then it starts changing directions, or just disappears, things like that. That make you think it's not a satellite because satellites don't move like that. But the most common is the star like. Yeah. Uh, disc and triangles, class, classic shapes. Um, always making their appearance on, on the charts. Yeah. Um, what else have we got on here? We've done close encounters. Uh, another thing that I did this year compared to previous years' reports was how many sort of sightings had anything to back it up with. So, out of the 497, 262 was just a witness report, yeah, just witness testimony. And then the other 230 had either video or photo evidence with them. That's quite just a lot. That evidence. Yeah, it's like nearly half. Yeah. Um, have some sort of video or photo evidence with them, which is always good. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Al always good to have. Um, and this is just our freedom of information. So every year we speak to every police force. And this year we've got 25 responses. And just seven forces gave us information. Uh, nine said they didn't have any information. The rest refused or just didn't reply whatsoever. Cheeky bastards. Yeah. Um, we only actually got four reports that we added to the database this year. Okay. Last year we got 21, which was quite wow. a decent amount. This year we only got yeah. four. So they've not given us information or people are reporting it to the police. We actually get information on, we actually I mean altogether we probably get about 100 incidents sent to us from the police. Um, but many of these are either clear hoaxes or people with sort of some sort of mental health issue. Yeah. So we yeah. just we ignore them. We just don't do anything with them. Um, and then there's so there's only four that were actual, what we perceive to be genuine UFO reports. And the interesting one, I, put, I did a Facebook post and Twitter post about it was West Yorkshire Police, I think it was. It was West Yorkshire or West Midlands, can't remember now. Oh, no, yeah, it's uh, West Yorkshire Police. It sent me a 17 page document, 17 pages of information. Wow. And it was all redacted. It was all blacked out. Wow. Just completely all, every line blacked out. So there's actually no, so it sent me 17 pages of no information. I suppose I spent more time blacking it all out. Yeah. Then it could have just said, we don't have any information. Or we're going to refuse to do it or something. Then just literally 17, 17 pages of black piece of paper at least they can't be you can't say that they were like hiding stuff at least they've sent you something you know they've got stuff but mm, well, just... <laughs> yeah so that's well, a very brief yeah that's cool of 2022 uk ufo report thoroughly uh informative and you probably will do. see us or myself or UFO identified in the papers in the next few days. Awesome. As we always get them, get a lot of media inquiries around this time yeah. with the report and yeah. stuff. So, yeah. Anyone, anyone sees us anywhere, let me know because I don't always spot all of them. Um, randomly come across like 
articles all the time where UFO identifier gets mentioned, but I didn't know about it and stuff. And I was in the sun, I didn't even know about it, like, until months later, and I randomly came across an article. I was reading it, I was like, oh, there's my name. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, like, look at you. Oh, you're yeah, famous. You have to get employ somebody to read the papers for you now. <laughs> we do turn down a lot of work. I would say that we don't. Um, we're not. Yeah. We're not media hungry. Like I say, we turned down this morning. We turned down Jeremy Kyle. They could get us in front of millions, but we don't turn it down. If we if we don't think yeah. that they line up with our values, and we don't think they're taking it seriously, then we just won't yeah. do it. Yeah, and it's probably to our detriment. But that's we we stand by our sort of what we aim, what our aims are, and why why we do it. Yeah, if that doesn't match th- up to that, then we won't do it. Yeah, I think, I suppose if it's the right program for the right reason, that's that's different. But the wrong program for the wrong reason, like you do see other people on from this community and the paranormal community potentially on there. Um, And it doesn't quite, the the narrative isn't quite what you'd expect it to be. Mm. So... And when, when we do turn something down, like we like certain newspapers, like the Sun, I I won't do anything with that paper. So I saw yep. my name in it. And what I know about that was, I think I probably talked about my name before, was they put it as like an exclusive because I I did an article with the Yorkshire Post that was then picked up by the Daily Mirror, the national newspaper, which is all fine and good. And then this Sun newspaper was like three days later talking about the same stuff but calling it an exclusive. Mm-hmm. It's like how is it exclusive? It's in two papers days before you put it in your paper, and they had permission to, from me to be in that paper. You never so yeah. There's some kind of they don't there. care, mate. I know they I don't can, care. How can you call it exclusive when it's literally in two different papers two days before? Cheeky bastards. Um, yeah, I always try and see who goes on when we turn something down. Who does go on? And I see who's on it. I'm like, yeah, I'm not surprised that person did it. <laughs> Some people are media hungry, and it's like, yeah, you just go on and say anything just to get the name, yeah, on the telly or in the paper or whatever. Which is what we we don't. I I yes, I'll be whatever. I'm always like, I try and get one of them to do it because I don't want my names in there or stuff. Because it, if it benefits the group, you have identified, then I'll do it. Yeah. Otherwise, no. Fair. That's good morals, Ash. It's good morals. <laughs> it is. It is definitely. Cool. I think that's about think, wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. Unless anybody's got any questions, we'll throw it out there quickly. It's been a, a slightly UFO heavy one tonight. Mm. Balloons. Balloons. Yeah. Yeah. Not much happens in the paranormal world. It's, uh... No, it doesn't. Doesn't change as much as it does. Like with the UFO stuff, like you say, with the balloons, it happened. Like it just escalated really quickly. So yeah, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks everyone for in the chat making comments, asking questions and stuff. It's uh, yeah, really always nice good. See everyone. Thanks, Neil. Tom says we should go do a like. We are we. We really, we, how many times have we said it? Like, I know, I know. We've got a, a very unique place that we can do it, and it just depends if we can get Wi-Fi or internet connection there, and we've got a great location. Mm. So we, um, we were going to do a live Esther's method, the live stream. Yeah, and yeah. We can get that side out. Yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah, that's definitely on the cards, Thomas. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks for joining us again, Nick. As always. Yep. Nice one. Yeah, I think that was really wrap it up there. Yeah. One hour twenty. Not bad. Uh, right. Nice one. Nice one. Now we'll speak to you all very soon. See you later, guys. Thanks, Thanks for joining us, Lisa. Bye. Bye.